So there's three phases. So there's the hide mapper test net phase, followed by the hide mapper network beta phase. And in the hide mapper network beta phase, that's when it will be open to everybody, but there will be 35 regions that will have a boost of honey tokens. We'll talk more about that. And then the final phase is that we remove the beta tag and it's just the hide mapper network. So the HiMapper testnet is an opportunity for us to actually test that the entire system, the entire HiMapper network is working properly. So this is really a, really a quality assurance, right? To, in, to verify that the dash cam is working properly, that the data from the dash cam is properly making it up to the HiMapper network, that we can then properly produce a map, and that the entire reward system and blockchain technologies that we're building are also working properly, that people are rewarded and it's accurate uh, and there's no issues there. Now, the important thing about the testnet phase is that all of the tokens that are earned are not the actual honey tokens, okay? So these are just test honey tokens. Uh, we'll come up with a new fun name for them, but you're really helping us understand that the entire product and the technology stack is working properly during the testnet phase. The tokens will represent what you could earn once the honey tokens are actually coming out. So we're trying to be make it an accurate reflection of the actual earning potential. But the actual tokens that are being rewarded are effectively uh, fake, okay? These are not gonna be the actual honey tokens. We'll find a way to reward those people who are participating in the testnet in a different way. And we'll talk more about that as we get closer to the testnet. So it's really just an opportunity for you as the contributor for HiveMap or the network to work together to ensure that whatever we're building is really solid, right? And there's no, there's no bugs, there's no issues with it. So that once we do get into that HiveMap or network launch where there is actually honey tokens, that there's no problems. Yeah, so the way that we're structuring the testnet is first order, first ship. So if you, let's say, April 5th was the date where we actually launched the Hive Mapper pre-order opportunity. So if you ordered, you know, let's say the very first person to order, um, then yes, you will be part of the testnet, okay? So we will just automatically ship it to those first people who actually ordered it. Uh, and then that will give you an opportunity to be part of the testnet. If you're participating in the testnet, there will be a reward. It will not be the honey token reward that you would naturally get as part of the Hive Mapper network beta, but there will be a separate reward for helping test the actual Hive Mapper network. And as we get closer to that date, we will define and help everybody understand what that reward mechanism is. It's really important that we test it, and so we wanna make sure that people are properly incentivized to actually help us test it uh, in a timely manner. The boost will take place in 35 regions all over the world. And when we say a region, we're talking about a very large area. So we're not just talking about, let's say, Los Angeles, the city. We're talking about the entire Los Angeles metro area. It's about 100,000 road kilometers. That's a lot of roads. And so the idea here is to create a lot of density, right? A lot of coverage in these 35 regions so that when customers are coming to us and saying, look, we want to actually use all this map imagery and all this map data, that there's these 35 amazing regions with incredible coverage and incredible freshness and density. So that's really the rationale behind the boost. Now, in terms of the boost, the High Mapper Foundation will ultimately be the decider of how much that boost is, but I think it'll be pretty significant, right? It'll be about five to 10 X what you would otherwise earn in other regions of the world. 
So the way we selected the 35 regions was we wanted a, a really great representation from many different parts of the world, right? We didn't want all 35 regions just to be, let's say, from the United States or from Europe. So there's obviously, I think, eight or 10 regions from the United States. There's roughly an equal number from Europe, Southeast Asia, and then there's also some from South America and Africa. So really having representation to ensure that the network can be mapping effectively and efficiently all over the world, right? So it can be just as effective in Sao Paulo or Lagos as it can in Los Angeles or London, right? So that was one criteria. The other is what do customers care about, right? There's specific areas that customers are coming to us and say, I really care about this region or that region. So we obviously took that feedback. And then in terms of the boundaries itself, you look, we obviously understand the San Francisco Bay Area, like what that should look like. That's our hometown here. But we don't understand every single region across the world. Like what should that may, uh, metro area boundary actually be? So we took a first um, draft of that, but then we put it out to the community and said, help us understand where the boundaries of this region and that region should be. And we got a lot of great feedback from the community saying, hey, you know, you can actually push it a little bit further here and pull it in a little bit here. And then we took all that feedback and published it into a map. And you can actually go and browse the map today and see the exact boundaries of these different regions all across the world. Dash cams are being manufactured here in the United States, uh, in Pennsylvania to be exact. And the reason we did that was to reduce risk, right? Rather than being in a very different time zone, you know, eight hours away, maybe being produced in a language that's not our native tongue, English here in the United States, we really felt it was important that we be able to, if needed, fly very quickly to where these are being manufactured and assembled, and also just be able to talk very openly and very quickly with the people who are manufacturing it, given that it is the first dash cams that we're producing. They are a little bit more expensive, given that we are producing them here in the United States, but we felt that was appropriate to help reduce the overall risk. The shipping delay of the dash cam is caused by an issue of the GPS not always getting a good lock on the satellites. So in addition to the imagery that's being captured, obviously that's critical, um, we also have a GPS uh, module that sits on the dash cam. And the way the GPS module works is it looks for all the different GPS satellites, right? So there's, you know, something like 20 or 30 different um, satellites. And so it'll con it needs to be able to connect to these and it needs to be able to connect to these uh, rather quickly, right? So it can't take like five, seven, 10 minutes to obtain that lock because if it doesn't obtain that lock, then it's not actually getting coordinates, right? And so we don't know where actually that imagery is being collected. And if we don't know where that imagery is being collected, it's not useful to us. It's not useful to the map. Um, and so what we saw was that that lock was just taking way too long, right? Sometimes it was taking three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes. And so we understand the cause of that, and we're actually now solving it. Right, so we actually have a solution to that problem. And now we're actually implementing that solution across 20, 30 different devices, and then putting those 20 or 30 different devices all, into the, all over the world to verify that it's actually working properly, not just here in San Francisco or Pennsylvania, but it's working in multiple locations all over the world under different types of conditions. Look, before you go and manufacture, you know, many, many, many thousands of these, you gotta get that kind of stuff right. And so we took the time to get that stuff right. So the issue that we found in the high mapper dash cam, or the HDC for short, um, we also discovered the same issue in the HDCS, right, or the S model. Um, so we are going back and applying a similar kind of fix to the S version as well. Um, and so that effectively shifts that timeline a little bit back further as well. So we always knew and we've always been very open and transparent that the S was going to be a little bit later than the HDC from a timeline perspective. And so we're not in a, we don't find ourselves in a situation where the S is now being pulled forward. It'll basically maintain that same lag relative to the HDC. 
when will I get my dash cam? And so rather than give everybody a very specific date, what we are committing to is giving updates on the progress of the HiveMapper dash cam from a hardware manufacturing and assembly perspective every two weeks. Earlier this week, Ari Brook, the head of hardware, gave a deep dive into what are the technical issues and what's the solution that we found to those issues. And so we'll do something similar every two weeks to help people see the progress that we're making in terms of the development and the testing and the manufacturing of the device so that a, it's important that we be transparent, and B, it will help everybody build confidence that we're running the HiveMapper dash cam through all of its, of its different paces, and you were actually seeing the results of all that quality testing that's happening, so that when you do get the device, you can have the confidence that yes, this thing is gonna work, and it's gonna work properly, and I'm not gonna have any issues with it. That's our, that's our primary focus, more so than any dates. In terms of moving the data from your Android device or your iPhone device to HiveMap or effectively transferring or uploading it, um, you never have to do that manually, right? So it's always automatic. Now, the default way is that it will connect to a Wi-Fi network, and when it connects to that Wi-Fi network, it will begin the process of automatically uploading all of the imagery and all the location data that your dash cam collected. Now, if you have an unlimited data plan, um, a cellular data plan that is, then you can, and this is optional, you can also upload it via cellular, right? So that's really up to you, but that is by no means the expectation. And it is totally fine if you're uploading it via Wi-Fi when you get to your office or when you get to your home. And that's the way we think most people will do it, right? Most people do not have an unlimited data plan and Wi-Fi will work just fine. So if you have a fleet, um, look, there's a, there's a couple of key benefits. One is obviously that earning potential, right? Uh, if you already have cars and trucks on the road, why not add a dash cam and then start to earn honey tokens for those vehicles that are already on the road, right? That's an asset that you invested in. And so this is an opportunity to potentially uh, earn rewards in the form of honey tokens that otherwise you wouldn't have, right? So that's one. If you're also in the logistics and transportation business, um, you certainly use maps, right? And so this is an opportunity to also be helping build the map that you can then turn around and use. And oh, by the way, you can use the honey tokens that you're earning, right, from all these different vehicles and trucks that you have on the road to actually then pay for the maps that you're actually using. So you effectively get both sides of the equation or of the marketplace, one is earning honey tokens through these vehicles and trucks that you deploy the dash cam to, and the other side actually using it. So the last opportunity from a fleet perspective is look, a lot of fleets want dash cams in their vehicles for insurance and liability purposes, right? So if one of your vehicles gets into an accident, you, especially with the HiveMap or Dash Cam S, you then have the video recording of that accident. Somebody hits one of your vehicles, you want to understand exactly what happened, with the high map or dash cam s you have that video available to you so it's another tool that you now now have in your vehicle so in addition to being able to map right that you can then use a lot of that data in addition to the earnings potential you also have a, an asset or this tool that you can then use in certain situations from an insurance and liability perspective to protect yourself the important thing with this question is that there's features that are, we're gonna build for fleets, right? Where you can actually lock the dash cam, right? To a very specific phone and to a very specific wallet, right? Uh, and there's also features around token splitting. So if you have like a driver and you're the operator of the fleet, there can do token splitting. So those are features that definitely are gonna get built that are focused on fleets. But if you don't um, deploy or use any of those features, 
the basic capabilities of the dash cam do enable you to move the dash cam from one vehicle to another and then connect different phones to that dash cam, right? So for example, I can draw, I can take the dash cam today, put it in my car, uh, put it in a friend's car tomorrow with a different phone, and that's totally fine. And so that's the default way that it actually, the dash cam works. Um, but there, like I said, there's different features that fleets can then use to actually prohibit some of that because they're making an investment in the dash cam and they want these dash cams used by specific vehicles and by specific wallets. We made some changes to how we're actually gonna do the shipping relative to these 35 regions. So previously we said, okay, if you're in any of these 35 regions, we're gonna do a first order first ship into these 35 regions. We decided to nix that and just A, it was adding a lot of complexity for everybody, a lot of confusion, and it ultimately also just wasn't fair, right? And so what we decided was, we're just gonna do first order first ship everywhere in the world. It doesn't matter if you're in, let's say, rural Virginia and you drive into DC every so often, you're gonna get your dash cam, right? If you're in rural DC and you ordered your dash cam very, very early, let's say April 5th, you're gonna get your dash cam well before somebody who ordered it, let's say May 15th. And so this will apply all over the world, regardless of where you happen to be.